I'm Chris Farrell from the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast, a wacky weekend morning show, part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out right now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and the opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other awesome geeky shows over at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. And welcome to Play Comics, the show where we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. As always, I'm Chris, and today we've got Kyle Federline from Real Dudes Podcast back. Kyle, how are you today? I'm doing good, Chris. Thank you for having me back on to one of the greatest comic book podcasts slash video game podcasts known to man. Oh, thank you. That's a wonderful way to start the day. (laughs) We definitely need to get you looking at something better than Superman 64. (laughs) So today we busted out the big guns and we're looking at Iron Man XO Manowar. Is this your way of telling me that you don't really like me putting me through these games? You're the one who picks them. Okay. (laughs) Maybe I don't like myself. So today we have a really, really, to my eyes, at least weird crossover to look at because I have no idea why these two characters were together. Yeah, it's uh, it's not normal. I mean, looking into all of this, Iron Man, we all know Iron Man from the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Anybody who does it just hasn't been paying attention for what seems like the past 10, 15 years. Yeah, I feel like that whole universe itself is really just blown up and exposed all those characters and really has gained an audience that may have not you know, once loved those characters that maybe we have within the last 15 years. Now, Iron Man, for anybody who isn't aware of it for whatever strange reason, is Tony Stark. Depending on which timeline of things you're reading in, it could have been Afghanistan war. It could have been various other wars at one point. I want to say I'm completely losing it to whichever war he happens to be in kind of changes based on time period stuff, but it's always he's captured just over in some other country stuck in a cave or something and makes himself a mech suit. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Almost almost like MacGyver. He's one of the smartest people in the Marvel Universe. Brilliant scientist. And makes his suit for pretty much anything you can possibly think of. I mean, he has a suit that can take out the Hulk. Yeah, that's um, it's a, it's an impressive amount of strength to be able to create something that can take down the Hulk. And I think you broke it down to me perfectly the last time we were on here because I like Iron Man a lot. And the last game that we discussed was Superman 64, and I dislike Lex Luthor a lot. And I said, what's the appeal of Lex Luthor? And I'm pretty sure it was you that said it. He is just like Iron Man in a way, Tony Stark. He's incredibly smart. And now I have a whole new light over over. Tony Stark, or not Tony Stark, over uh, Lex Luthor. But to be able to create something in a cave, you know, I can take down enemies and and escape from there is just absolutely impressive and just a mastermind. When Iron Man was being created, they were kind of trying to make a new character that wasn't super instantly likable by everybody. You know, everybody loves Peter Parker because he's a little teenage superhero Everybody loves Thor because he's a god. They were kind of trying to make a jerk character and see if they could have it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, kind of an alcoholic a little bit. 
Maybe. Maybe I'm just making that up. Oh, no. He's definitely an alcoholic in yeah. there. That's come into a few of the storylines that I've kind of glanced at a little bit. Definitely something they've brought into some of the storylines and used it as almost a depression-y maybe type thing too. Yeah. Until you get him leading into the Marvel Cinematic Universe wasn't the hugest character. Um, no. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with you because I, I didn't know a lot about Iron Man before those movies came out. Not as, not as much as like Superman or, or Spider-Man or like Superman would be part of that universe, but like your, your general comic book characters. He had some appearances in the Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, he did have a 90s cartoon of his own, but I've watched it and even by 90s cartoon standards, it's pretty bad. Really? I don't know. I don't think I remembered that. That's must have been short. Didn't last long. No, not at all. It's it's really bad. Huh. And he has a mullet. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's that probably got, one of the reasons why he got canceled. And the thing with Tony Stark is he's almost kind of like Batman in the sense that he doesn't really have any powers on his own. It's all gadget based for him. Part of the thing with his suit is that core that he has in there that keeps him alive because he's got some shrapnel and war damage right by his heart. Almost every single one of his suits can fly. They all give him some superhuman strength. And they've all pretty much got something special about them because why can you have one suit that does everything when you can have many suits and many excuses for artists to draw new things? Right. Right. It's like he has a suit for any situation. What's really cool is when you can go down, look, and just see the lineup of suits that he's had. He keeps ones around that he hasn't used in a while just because they're cool looking. He keeps them around it's just so he can sit there and say, oh, I need to use this suit today. And he goes and uses it. And uh, not only does he, you know, have suits for himself, but he's known to have made suits for other characters in the universe also, such as Spider-Man. Yep, War Machine got mm -hmm. his suit from Iron Man, and then eventually Ironheart as well when Pepper gets her suit. Right, which is awesome. And Iron Man tends to hang out with a bunch of teams in the Marvel Universe as well. Founding member of the Avengers... <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy for a while. He's just pretty much all over the place, which is funny to me considering that they used him in that first Marvel Cinematic Universe film because he wasn't somebody super well-known. And if the whole thing hadn't really taken off, they wouldn't have essentially wasted one of their flagship characters. Huh, I never really thought of it like that. That's... Really interesting. And I don't know, that's just that's strategy, smart for them to do that. And yet the the movie itself, I loved that movie, the first Iron Man when it came out. Now that came out right when I was finishing college. So we were all over that. Yeah. And then on the other side of things for this one we have Exo Man of War. Who? That's pretty much what I said. <laughs> I have never, as far as I know, really been into any Valiant Comics character. Which is where Exo Manowar comes from. Uh, I am not familiar with Valiant Comics. Other than Exo Manowar. I mean, the only reason I'm familiar with this one is because of the game. Yeah, same here. And just scrolling through a list real quick of their characters, there is literally nobody else that I really recognize. Um, yeah, I figured. Yep. 
They've got some cool character design, but yeah, I'm I'm not familiar with any of their comics or the characters either. Which is really weird to me, considering that he was created by Jim Shooter and Steve Englehart and Barry Windsor Smith, and I mean those are names I recognize. They've definitely done things that you know, mm-hmm. even if you don't know that they did them. Yeah, so this just might be the character that just could never get a a um, spot in the comic world. I don't know if it didn't just draw enough attention or what. But Exo Manowar started in comics in 92, so just a few years before this game came out. Maybe this was a push to try to get him into the spotlight. I don't know. Do you, do you think the fact that Acclaim did the game backfired that on them? I don't know. I mean, you're definitely using somebody that you have the rights to and that you should know a lot about because you've got all the inside information right there at your fingertips. True, true. So Exo Man of War is pretty similar to Iron Man in the fact that there's some power armor there. It gives him strength and speed and he can fly and has blasts like how Iron Man has his repulsor rays. In a lot of ways, it's basically Iron Man with a different skin. Yeah, the um the armor Shanhara, I think it's how you pronounce it, uh was composed of organic and uh, exotic metals to create the armor which is pretty cool, maybe a little different than the way Iron Man's is. Man, you know what just hit me? Iron Man and Exo Man of War in heavy metal for some reason i always thought that was such a weird name but now <laughs> i think a light bulb just went off in my head and i understand what that means i always figured it was just the soundtrack i did too but do you think it's referring to that they are in heavy metal blasting enemies it might be like is it a play on words i think so we've just See, made a breakthrough i i, I really I mean, that makes more sense to me than, like, I always thought, wow, this game's heavy metal. Like, what is what does that even mean? Is it referring to the music in the game? Because I can't remember. Was there heavy metal music? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting you off track here. I know there at least was in the Saturn version because I looked at that and not the PlayStation one. Yeah, I, I think there was as well. I just don't remember me- there being music towards the beginning of the game, or at least the music was not notable to me at the beginning of the game. Exo Manowar, his real name is Eric of Dacia. I'm assuming it's Eric because it's A-R-I-C, and I don't know any other way you could possibly pronounce that. And he is like a 5th century Visigoth warrior who is abducted by a race of aliens. Coming from that kind of background, he's used to battle, used to war, used to dealing with a lot of crap. And, you know, fighting the Romans is going to give you a lot of experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After he gets collected by this alien species, he's going through their temple and steals the Exo Man of War armor and uses it to fight his way back against the people who abducted him. So, that, I mean, that kind of sounds similar to Iron Man's storyline. You know, he's out in that war, he gets stuck in a cave, and then he creates an armor to uh, basically destroy the the people that he was fighting against. Eric gets this armor while he was abducted by aliens to destroy the people that he was captured from or by. It almost seems like it's as close as you can get to copying without copying. Right, which is why maybe they teamed up to do a game. And they did have a two-issue comic crossover featuring the two heroes together. I was not able to find it. To be honest, I probably could have looked a little harder, but work has been crazy the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get as much chance to look as I normally would have. You mean you do a podcast and you still have a day job? It's true. 
I'm working on quitting the day job, but I'm not getting enough Patreon money for that yet. (laughs) I feel your pain, man. I feel it. feel it. But yeah, uh, work's been extremely busy over the last couple weeks, and I wish I would have got more time with this game, but I got some time with it, and it's still how I remember it when I was like uh, eight, probably. I probably played this when I was between eight and ten. Well, we're going to sit here and try to write up our resignation letters as we drop some promos for a few other shows. Hey, Christy, I had a few questions about a comic if you had a second. Oh, sure. What comic? Well, it's a big event crossover, Secret Wars. Oh, that's a great one. Doctor Doom with godlike powers. No, that's not the one. Oh, you mean the older 1985 Secret Wars where the heroes and villains have to fight for the Beyonder? No, that's not it either. It's, um, newer than that. Uh, Maybe you mean Secret War, where the heroes try to overthrow Latveria. What? No, this one has aliens. Oh, oh, I got it now. You mean Secret Invasion, with the green aliens called the Skrull? No, 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 the aliens weren't green. (sighs) There's no way. You mean Invasion? That isn't even by Marvel. Look, we get it. Comic book crossovers are weird and confusing. With complicated reading orders and lots of characters, even heroes no one has seen for years. But that's why we're here. We're Christy and Chris, and on our podcast, Chris's on Infinite Earths, we dive deep into the superhero world's big events and crossovers. We talk about improbable mountain lifting. Superhero mommy issues. Victorian space vampires. And we always try to make it light and fun. So join us every other Friday on Chris's on Infinite Earths. The podcast where nothing will ever be the same. Does your place in the world have you feeling down or depressed? We here at Multiverse of Q want to help by covering comic stories of worlds that went differently, helping you to be assured that things could be much, much, much worse. New episodes on Sundays at MultiverseOQ.com and on the podcatcher of your choice. Those are a few great shows you should check out, but first let's finish up with this one. So Kyle, I really love in this one how we didn't even talk about it beforehand, but you looked at the PlayStation version and I looked at the Saturn version. Mm -hmm. It's because we're just perfectly in sync like that. It's amazing. It is. We're like, we gotta check out every version of this game. Technically, there's also a Game Boy and a Game Gear and a DOS version, but yeah, we don't care. Almost every version of the game. 50%. All the versions that count. Yeah. The Game Boy version is just kind of funny to me. I don't know why Game Boy would get a version of this, but not any other Nintendo console. Um. Yeah, I don't know either. That's really interesting because, let's see, it came out in 96, right? That was yeah. right before the 64, I think. No, 64 came out in 96. I don't know. That is strange. Though. So you figured another one of their consoles would have gotten some kind of port of it. Yeah, it's sitting right there between Super Nintendo and 64. Like, mm-hmm. eh, I don't know, maybe. But normally, when you look up stuff for the game, it'll mention something about how it was planned to come out on a console and didn't happen. Like, this one was going to come out for Jaguar, and then they just didn't do it. It's possible that Nintendo was thinking, listen, we've got a superhero game in the works. It's probably going to be the best superhero game uh, anyone's ever seen. Um, It's got Superman in it, so we're just going to hold off on this one and keep working on that one. I mean, it was a top seller. (laughs) That's true. Makes perfect sense why Game Gear would get it coming off Saturn, kind of, I guess, Mm -hmm. because that's a little bit of a generation jump. So in this game, you can be either Iron Man or Exo Man of War. They can both jump. I hope so, because that makes perfect sense that people can jump. They can both punch things. They both have an unlimited supply of laser beams which I'm just going to say laser beams because I don't want to make a distinction here of what they actually are. Gamma rays. Why not? Laser beams. Concussive blasts. They can be whatever. 
Shooty shooties. We're going to call them that now. They are officially known as shooty shooties. <laughs> they shoot stuff. You can upgrade your shooty shooties throughout the game. There's a few other little things you can collect. You can get more fuel so that you can fly through the air a little longer and you can get stronger shooty shooties and you can have a mega shooty shooty. Uh, super blast. Super mega shooty shooty. Most importantly, you can play this couch co-op. Yes. That was one of the biggest things when I was younger that appealed to me. Unfortunately, I think when I had friends over to play with me, it they were probably more irritated with me than enjoying playing this game. Well, it is kind of an irritating game. Yeah. Yep. A lot like Batman Forever. Oh, hold but on. Not hold nearly on. to that level. <laughs> hold on. Batman Forever. No, I'm th- I think that was a Batman and Robin game. Forever was was on Genesis, wasn't it? Yep. Okay, never mind. I enjoyed Forever, but I enjoyed the like fighting like versus each other. I think that was in that game. I think there was a versus mode in that game. I don't remember. Maybe not. I'm thinking of Batman and Robin, the terrible 3D game. Ugh. I absolutely loved it as a kid. Having fl- horrible flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Again, getting you off track. You're just you're you're bringing up memories of my childhood, and I just I'm kind of gushing over them. A lot like Batman Forever, there are parts in the levels of this game where you just can't really see where you're supposed to go. But this one is kind of the opposite problem where there are so many places where it looks like you can go that you can't. Mm -hmm. And then there's places where if I hadn't have been tricked for the past, you know, 10 minutes of playing through the level, I would think perfectly normally oh, okay i gotta jump up to get to like the second story but i've just had 10 minutes of i could only go left and right so why would i think of going up now yeah i think you encounter that within the first few minutes of the game where you don't you realize there's enemies on a level above you but you can't see that you're supposed to fly up there or float up there because their flying animation kind of looks like a float. Uh, and and there's walls that you can shoot that just explode for no reason. So it kind of it's a, it's a little misleading and also frustrating too. This game actually does have a storyline though. You're getting it mostly through on-screen text, but you are getting a story. Iron Man and Exo Manowar have to team up to stop a team of supervillains from grabbing some fragments of the Cosmic Cube. And the aliens that Eric stole the Manowar armor from want the armor back. They have to fight through everything to try to stop the evil villains from fulfilling their goals. Mm -hmm. But what I like about this game is that you can be... Iron Man or Exo Man of War in whatever level you want. So you're not stuck being Iron Man against the Iron Man people and Man of War against the Man of War people. So do you think that most of most people played Iron Man? Most of those that love comics played Iron Man and then the hipsters played Exo Man of War? I definitely played Iron Man more yeah. in mine. He's a little smaller. So it just, I don't know, maybe it's just my play style or what, but I seem to not get hit so much with Iron Man. It mm-hmm. might just be confirmation bias or something. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm right there with you. I completely agree with that. I felt the same way when playing this. But like we alluded to earlier, the game is just really unremarkable. Like, it's not horrible. But there's nothing about it that, you know, screams, hey, let me bring my friends over to play it with me. Yeah, it's... It's it's not a... 
broken game to say, but it is definitely a game that feels more like a chore than it does um, feel like something that you do to have fun. Because Superman 64 was broken and frustrating. You could at least make some progress in this game without throwing your controller across the room. But this game does have a really 90s metal soundtrack. Very safe video game metal, but still metal. Mm. Which is a little different from like the bit tracks and stuff that were coming out around that time. I feel like that was part of the transition between generations. Uh, stepping away from um, like the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis music and starting to get into the the music that you'd hear in like Mario 64 and, and games coming out in 96 and around those years. This thing was panned by critics when it came out. Uh, it's just... I mean, we're talking like three and four out of ten scores no matter what version you're looking at. It's... There's nothing about this game. Even I didn't even really see many speedruns of this game. And I see speedrunners playing everything. Mm, yeah. There's not not a whole lot of it. Not a uh I don't know if you could even really speedrun the the game per se because the characters move so slow on the screen there is something that i was introduced to years ago um on youtube called replay and that's where i rewatched that um recently because they played iron man and exo man of war and heavy metal on there and it, it's a um, a series done by game informer and it's kind of like are you familiar with Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yes. I so am. it's kind of like that with video games. Like they play games. Some of them are good games. Some of them are terrible games. And they do commentary over while they play. And it's a group of guys playing it. It's hilarious. And so I went back and watched that recently when you had asked me to um, come on this lovely show. And I don't know. It's just watching them play and then hearing the jokes and then watching watching some of the stuff that goes on in there it, it's it just uh i think that's what this game was made for is for people to play in groups and make fun of it while while they're playing it this one almost seems like somebody said oh we should make a comic game but we don't want to or can't use any characters that people really like <laughs> yeah so we'll throw iron man and his copy character exo man of war I mean, in the first mission, you're going through a nuclear plant, and the boss there is Dr. Hyde, which is not something a lot of people have heard of that I've talked to. Yeah. Um, I'm not familiar with that guy. Honestly, when I saw him, I thought it was their version of the Incredible Hawk. Second mission, you're going through Stark Enterprises, and your boss is Titania. Again, I have no idea who that is. And then Yellow Jacket, which I know of more as like an Ant-Man villain. Mm -hmm. So really curious about why they have an Ant-Man villain here instead of an Iron Man villain. Unless I'm just completely wrong about who Yellow Jacket is connected with. Um, no, I, I think you're right. I thought it was Ant Man. And you have Goliath. Oh, which... from like biblical Goliath? No, or... like Ant Man Goliath. Oh, 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 sorry. I was thinking because of. Uh... Uh, Exo Man of War being tied to fighting the Romans and stuff. And I don't know if that. Why do you have Goliath being a boss? <laughs> I don't know. 
It's weird. Yeah. You have to go through and retake New York City. I mean, it's just, it's a ton of levels of go through, shoot some things, fight through enemies, fight a boss that you pretty much don't know anything about, except for Absorbing Man. I do know who he is. To be honest, I don't know who he is. Is he associated with Iron Man? He's a Marvel villain. I'm, I've seen him kind of as like a lower level for a ton of people, so okay. I'm not he sure who he's really tied to. But he absorbs material and its properties. That's cool. But that's pretty much the whole game. I mean, you're just going through and fighting people that you don't know about. You do eventually have to fight Barrett Zemo. Yeah. Can I say, the fighting just... The actual, like, punching and stuff does not feel good. Shooting reminds me of Contra a little bit, like a slower-paced Contra. But it just it doesn't feel like a good brawler. No, it's... I mean, let's kind of jump off from there. What do you think the game really gets wrong? A lot of stuff. I'm right there with you. I mean, yeah, I, it it gets more wrong than it does uh, right. Um, I almost wonder if they went to like a a 16 bit type of graphics, if they could have done more with the gameplay itself and made it smoother, and made the fighting a little bit more enjoyable. Um. But I think what they were trying to accomplish with the game, with it trying to be a little bit more modern at the time, uh, it was not executed well. Um, it, and like I said before, playing the game itself seemed more like a chore than it did being fun. It, it just, it wasn't... The cover of the game was more exciting than the game itself to me. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Oh, I totally understand you there. Yeah. It's like, oh, this game looks so awesome. And then you put it in and play it, and you're struggling with the fighting. Um, enemies are irritating. Puzzles in the game are irritating because you can't quite tell um, what you're supposed to do because the, the graphics or the textures themselves don't really give away to where you're supposed to go next. Music's not bad. If this game had been actual 3D at the speed that it's at and everything... We could look at it and say, oh, it's just an early 3D game. It's the best they could do. Yeah. But the fact that it's 2D like this, they had the technology to make it work. They they could have made it so much better, and they just didn't. And you don't really get much of an explanation of who people are or why you're doing anything. So they... It just almost seems like they were going to make this game anyway, and then somebody came by and said, oh yeah, you should put a comic license on it. Yeah. Do you think it would have been a better game if it if it didn't have Iron Man or Exo Man of War in it, if it was just some new game out that had characters that were unknown? Or do you think that wouldn't have mattered? If they put it out like this, I don't think it would have mattered. Okay. If they had a <clears throat> bunch of Marvel and valiant oversight trying to tell them what to do and put a deadline on it or anything, then you really could have had people sit there and take the time to make it work. It's true. I wonder how long production was for this. Mm, I don't know. I've never been able to find that. Yeah, I don't know either. I've only found it on times when somebody had to push it out ridiculously fast. Yeah. But... To your question, it doesn't get a lot of things right. Um, or or it gets a lot of, th well, yeah, it gets a lot of things wrong. Because really the best I can say is that assuming you know who the characters are in the first place, everybody looks like you'd expect them to look in this era of game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we can pretty much skip over what it gets right because that's honestly about it. I think the only thing that I could think of as far as it getting right is the fact that it was couch co-op encouraging you to play with your friends next to each other, which we don't see a lot nowadays. 
Yeah, that is good. And it doesn't really get anything blatantly wrong. You know, it's not sitting here presenting you with a wrong outlook of what either of these characters is about. It just right. leaves so much things out that really, I think, need to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely can agree with that. So if you have somebody who wanted to get into Iron Man or Exo Manowar, would you give them this game as a bit of a primer course? No. Because I don't, if I handed this game to somebody, I don't know if they'd have the patience to get through it. Would you? No, there, there's absolutely no way. It doesn't teach them anything, I think, about either character. Mm-hmm. You could hand somebody a War of the Gems and they'll learn more about Iron Man from that. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as Exo Man Award, honestly, we just tell them to go search on Google or something. I'd still hand him War of the Gems. And then I'd say Exo Man Award is Iron Man, except he's pulled from Ancient Warrior Society. Oh, okay. That's smart. That is smart. So Kyle, as always, it's great having you on again. If people oh, yeah. like hearing from you, where else can they find you around the internet? Um, so you can find my personal Twitter uh, at Kyle Fetterline, um, and then also um, on Real Dudes Podcast um, with your past guest Carrington. Um, we release new episodes every Monday, and we might start to release um, episodes on Thursday as well. We're still, that's still under wraps, so. Um, but you can follow us on there at Real Dudes underscore pod. And then Facebook and Instagram is Real Dudes Podcast. And yeah, that's it. Chris, thank you so much for having me on here. It's always a uh, treat when I see that you ask me to come on and talk on your show. Well, thank you. It's always nice having you on. And of course, we'll have links to all that down in the show notes because clicking links is easier than trying to spell things. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, you are absolutely right. If you want to hear more from me, you can head on over to Twitter at Play Comics Cast, uh, PlayComics.com, or the Facebook group. Easiest way is to go to PlayComics.com slash Facebook group. Just squish all that together like it's one big old word. Don't forget that we have a merch store and a Patreon if you want to help support the show. And when Kaylee and I finally get our acts together, we have Bedling Kids where we look at Scooby-Doo and all the things that we love about it. Also, don't forget that Play Comics is part of the Gunna Geek Network, home of such wonderful shows as On the Bubble, where Josh Liston goes and looks at TV shows and their fan campaigns to save the show. It's a really interesting look at things, and everybody should go check it out. And if you like the wonderful music we're rudely talking on top of, head on over to soundcloud.com slash best-day to check out Best Day's music. But most of all, just grab a game, grab a stack of comics, and go find yourself a new favorite character. To Play Comics, the show where we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they stick to that source material. As always, I'm Chris, and today we've got Kyle Fetterline back. I almost said Kevin. I'm going to do that again. Pew, pew, pew. Shooty, shooty.